We're in the middle of a series. We've gone through it so far. But we, we've learned the first thing we learned is there is a difference between joy and happiness. There is a difference. Happiness is normally derived from happenings. So if nothing is happening on the outside, um, I'm not happy. Joy, we've learned, is something internal, something that God is doing and can do on the inside of a believer. So no matter what you may be facing on the outside, you can still have joy because Scripture does reveal to us that the joy of the Lord is our... Y'all helping me preach already. So we, we've, been, we've been looking at the life of Paul, his ministry to the believers at Philippi, and Paul now, he, he's writing this letter, he's, he's, he's been arrested, he's in prison, he's in chains, and he's writing as he's awaiting trial, possibly and probably to be executed. We know this already. And in the middle of it, he revealed to us that there is, there's joint partnership. So he's in the middle of partnering with the believers at Philippi as he's in prison. And he expresses that even though he is in chains, even though he's in prison, because of his partnership with them, the gospel is still going forward. In other words, the enemy can't stop God's plan for your life. Even arrested in prison, the gospel was still going forward and he was still able to do the things God called him to do. I'm trying to tell you that it does not matter what opposition you face. If God has called you to do something, nothing can stop what God wants to do in and through your life. Then we learned also that there's joy in adversity. Paul says to live is Christ and to die is gain. Y'all didn't, didn't like that. To live is Christ. In other words, if I'm living, I'm living for Christ. I'm going to proclaim him. I'm going to confirm him. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to live for Jesus. Amen. Got one hand clap, one amen. Then he says, but if I die, it's gain. Why? To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So he realized that no matter what situation I might find myself in, I win. Either way, I win. Then he revealed to us that there's joy and humility, that, that as believers, sometimes our ego, our pride can get in the way. In fact, it can even cause division and strife within the church. <laughs> it can. And he says there's joy and humility that as, as believers, we should be humble. The word of God says he who exalts himself will be, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. And the word of God reveals to us through the example of Jesus that he emptied himself. He humbled himself even to be a servant so that you and I can have eternal life. The humility of Christ is what we should live in and walk out. Last week we learned there's joy in obedience. Yeah, four-letter word, obey. <laughs> what y'all looking at me like that for? <laughs> obey. Obedience, right? I'll bring, bring it back to Jesus, all right? Right? Obedience. And we learn that it's joint obedience. Now, as, as believers, the Word of God says that, that um, I, I praise God for you, therefore, as you have always obeyed. The Word of God reveals to us that Paul is praising them because he's, he's saying, you have continued to obey in my absence as you have always obeyed. In other words, don't change. Continue to be obedient to the things that God has called you to do. And he reveals to us when you're on this journey of faith like you and I are, don't complain. Don't be like the people of Israel who, who grumbled and complained and they ended up spending 40 years in the wilderness. He says, don't grumble and complain, but trust God. Trust God's plan. Trust God's process that leads you to the promise. There, you can't skip process. We learned that last week. This week, I want us to look at, as, as believers, uh, that there is joy in the prize. There's joy in the prize. Joy in the prize. What are you striving towards? She preaching. Who, who said? It's, there's always one person that's super sanctified and filled with the precious Holy Ghost. She, she didn't hacked into all my notes and everything. She didn't preach the whole sermon in two seconds. What are you striving to, to do? What, do you, what, what is your goal in life? What are you striving towards? If I, was to, if I was to ask you right now, what are you attaining? What are you striving towards? What do you want to do? What is your goal? What will be your response? You're taking notes. Take, you're taking notes. Write it down right now. Just the first thing. Come, is, is it a house? Is it a raise? Somebody say yes. Come on and praise God. For it. He said, I said, is it a raise? Yes, it's a raise. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to praise God that you get the raise in the name of Jesus. Lord, meet every single one of her needs in the, according to your riches and glory and do all that you can do through her life and give her favor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 
Amen. What is it that you're striving for? Is it a, is it a family? Is it, is it, is it, is it to, 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 to be in good health? Is it, what, it, what is it? When you think, when I say the words, what is your goal in this season of your life? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? You're online, type it in the chat. What are you straining towards? What are you, what are you going towards? What are you moving towards? Because Paul is going to challenge us as believers. But in, in this challenge to us as believers and what we're striving towards, what we're trying to attain, he's actually going to bless us. Right. And in this particular passage of Scripture, we've, we've, we have, we, you have probably read it ten times. But, but I'm not going to skip past the Scripture because you think you know it. We're going to grow in our, in our faith together. For some, it may be a reminder. It may be a refresher. For some of us, it, it may anchor us in where God is going to take us in this next season of our life. Uh, Paul's going to show us at least three things that we should have joy in the prize for. The first thing he reveals to us is that there is joy in knowing Jesus. There is joy. When you look at this culture we live in, when you look at the world we live in, when we see the wickedness and the evil, somebody help me praise God, there is joy in knowing Jesus. And, and, and just living in this life, going through the normal rigor and trials and tests and unfortunate situations that happen to us when you, when you find out that you're sick or something goes wrong when you get laid off, there is joy in knowing Jesus. When, when your whole life is turned upside down, there is joy in knowing Jesus because as long as I have Jesus, I know I have enough to start over again. Yo, do, I, do I got any, any witnesses in, the, in here this morning that, that I can testify that, listen, I've been, I've been through storms, I've been through dangers seen and unseen, but I had joy knowing that I know Jesus. Paul says there's joy in knowing Jesus. Why? We're, we're, we're now in, in, chap, in chapter uh, uh, 3 of Philippians. We've been going through the entire book. We're in chapter 3, verse 7. I want to read this to you. But whatever was gained to me, I now consider a loss for Christ. One more time. What is your goal? What are you striving towards? Paul says, whatever was gained to me, I consider it a loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I lost all things. Watch this. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. Watch this. And be found in him, not having a righteousness or ratchetness of my own that comes from the law, or the culture, but that which is through what? Faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. Are you with me? Then he doesn't stop. He says, I want to know Christ. Yes. I want to know the power of his resurrection. Y'all, y'all don't, don't close your Bible. Watch this. And the participation of his suffering. Becoming like him even unto death, that somehow I may receive the resurrection from the dead. See, everybody wants resurrection power, but nobody wants anything to die. I I want to experience resurrection power. Something has to die for you to experience the resurrected power of Jesus Christ. Paul says, I want to know him. I want to know him. I want to know Jesus. He says, I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want, I don't want you to tell me about him. I want to know him. I, I, I don't want to read about him in a book. I, I want to know him. When, when he says the word no, he says, I want to know him personally and I want to know him experientially. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I heard grandma talking about him, praise God, but I want to know him for myself. I heard, I heard my grandpa talking about him, and he, prayed, he lifted his hand, and he praised God. No, but I want to know him for myself. He says, I, I want to know God personally, and I want to know Jesus experientially because, because it, it's not enough for me to hear about him. 
I want to know him. And you know what I want to do? I want to know him so good that I experience his power in my life. Because when I read scripture, there are people who have interactions with Jesus, and they, when they experience him, their entire life is transformed and changed. I don't just want to hear about him. In fact, I don't want to just come to church. I don't just want to go to a prayer service. Uh, I want to know him for myself. That, that, that when the rubber meets the road, I want to be able to raise my hand and say, but I know Jesus. When I'm sick and I'm down and I'm out, I want to be reminded of what Jesus did then and trust God to do the same thing he can do now. That when there was a woman with an issue of blood and she did not know what to do, she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. She wanted to experience what she heard about him because she wanted to know him for herself and she was healed. Why? Because she experienced him for herself. Do you want to know him not hear about him, but know him for yourself. I've got a testimony. When I went through the roughest seasons of my life, people, Pastor JP, how in the the world are you standing? How are you making it? Let me tell you about Jesus. I heard about him back there, but I experienced him right here. It increased my faith. It increased my hope. It increased my strength. Why? Because I'm experiencing his power that sustains me in the worst periods of my life. Do I got any witnesses in here on Sunday morning that I have not just heard about him, I personally know about him, and I've experienced his power be made manifest in my life. Paul says, I want to know him. But he says something crazy. He says, Everything that I attained, everything I was working towards, is garbage. I consider it a loss. But but this this is the, the crazy thing is he's accomplished. Paul, he is significantly accomplished. The word of God says he was circumcised on the eighth day. You got your Bibles. I want you to go. He says, I'm circumcised from the first, uh, on, 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 the first, on the eighth day. I'm, I'm, a Hebrew, I'm, I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. He says, I'm, 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 um, I'm blameless according to righteousness. I mean, he goes through the list. The zeal is a Pharisee. He goes through all of them. And, and when, when Jews would have been reading this in this time, they would say, my goodness, this man's resume is impeccable. How was this man able to obtain this much success? And he, he knows in the culture of his time, he's one of the esteemed, he, the esteemed, he's one of the sought after people, he's successful. And he says, it's garbage. He says, I'll, I'll call it, I'll count it all a loss that I may gain Christ. What do you want more than you want Jesus. What did you write down when I, when I asked you, what are you straining towards? What is your goal? What is your prize? What do you want? Do you want it more than Jesus? Was he even on the list? He says, I'm, I'm, I, I was circumcised on the eighth day. Stay with me. When he says he's circumcised on the eighth day, he's, he's, he's showing that from birth, from his very beginning, from birth, he, he, he has been committed and faithful to the faith. He's been committed from birth, from his circumcision. Then he says, I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. He says, I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. When he says, I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews, he's literally saying that I'm a son of a parent who's Hebrew. So I'm not, I haven't just been circumcised on the eighth day. I haven't just followed the tradition since I, was, since I was a kid. I haven't just followed the ways of God from the, the minute I came out when I was born. But my parents have a heritage and a legacy of the faith. I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. Who are you? I'm a son of Hebrew parents. But he doesn't stop there. He says, but I'm from the tribe of Benjamin, the, the tribe that was esteemed, the, the tribe that the, that the first king of Israel, Saul, came from. And by the way, my name's Saul too. His name was Saul, then it was changed to Paul. So he's, he's given this, this impeccable resume. Then he says, and, 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 I, and I had a, a zeal as a Pharisee. He says, I, I tortured the church. I was a Pharisee. I persecuted the church. In fact, 
the, the very thing that the Lord is using me to build, there was a season of my life where I was tearing it down. That's why he says in Scripture, he says, of, of, this, of sinners, I, I'm the worst. Because he, when Stephen was, was, was stoned to death, it was Saul's feet, Paul's feet, that they laid his cloak at, and he gave the green light to stone him to death. He says, I had zeal for as a, as, a, as a Pharisee. What's amazing is God used the same zeal he had tearing down the church and used the same zeal to build up the church. That means God can use the same zeal you had before you knew Christ to do something for Christ. Then he says, righteous under the law. In other words, Paul's reminding us, listen to me, I'm, I'm, I, was, I was righteous. I, I followed every letter of the law. Followed all of them. I followed the law to the T. I followed it. And because I followed the law, I was blameless. So he thought. Then he goes on to write in his other letters that the, 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 the law revealed to me that sin actually lived in me because he could not live up to the standard of the law. Then he says, the thing that I don't want to do is the thing that I do. And the thing that I do want to do is the thing that I don't do. Then he says, oh, what, I don't know if it's wretched or ratchet, man, which, whichever translation you have. Oh, who will deliver me from this body of death? Then he says, oh, praise be to our Lord Jesus Christ who has redeemed and saved me. It's in your Bible. So he says, blameless as to the law. So he, re he realizes that as, a, as, as someone who has done his best to try to follow God, he, he did everything to be successful in their culture. He did everything possible to be successful and comes to these, these few conclusions. I want to know Christ. I know you saw my, my, my resume, but I'm willing to lose all of it to know Jesus. Take it all, all my achievements, my accolades, take it all. I'm willing to lose all of that just to know Christ. Then he says, when I compare them, he uses this word, to surpassing knowledge of Jesus, it's garbage. In fact, in the original language, it's a word called skubalan. And, and that word literally means dung. Rubbish, donkey dung. He said, I'm, I'm not joking, this, this, in the original language it means dung, donkey dung. It means when I look at my success and I, come, and I, and I put knowing Jesus Christ, my achievements are, are rubbish, donkey dung. They're meaningless, it's trash, it's worthless. Because there is nothing I can ever attain in life that is more important than knowing Jesus Christ. And he says, I'm willing to lose all of it. Would you rather have a massive house or Jesus? Would you rather have a really expensive, exotic car or no Jesus? Would you, would, you, would, you, would you rather have whatever amount of money you say out loud in your bank account or no Jesus? See, everybody responds that way, but everybody doesn't believe it. I want to know Jesus. But you didn't choose them. Can we be real? There have been moments since y'all are perfect in my life that I was straining towards achieving things and miss God. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with having a nice house, nice car. There's nothing wrong with those things. But Paul says... I'm willing to lose all of them to know Jesus. Are you willing? <laughs> Care how many degrees I have. It's to the degree that I know Jesus <laughs> that it makes a difference. He says, it's, it's all rubbish. I'm willing to lose all of it that I may be, watch it, that I may gain him and be found in him. It, he, he, he says, I don't, I don't, wanna, I don't just want to attend church. I want to know him. And I want to be found in him. 
I'll lose it all. He says, there is joy in knowing Jesus. Paul is in prison. He's been persecuted. He's gone through all kinds of ups and downs. But he, never, he doesn't lose his joy because he says, I want to know him. But then he also has joy because there is joy in letting go of the past. I'm about to bless somebody. There's joy in knowing Jesus, and there's joy in, in letting go of the past. Right? Go to verse, go to verse 13. It says this, brothers and sisters, do not consider that I have made it on my own. I don't consider that I have made it, I've made it my own. But one thing I do, what do you do? Forget what lies behind me. And I strain towards what lies ahead. But he says, I don't, I don't, I don't claim to have already arrived. But in order for me, listen, the, the, this, there's joy in attain, obtaining the prize. So how do I get the prize? First thing I learned is, first of all, I'm not even in the race if I don't know Jesus. I'm not even in the race. I'm not even on the journey of faith unless I know Jesus. So there's joy in knowing Jesus. I'm in the race. Well, the next thing I have to do is if I, if I, if I want to obtain this prize, I have to forget what's behind me. Paul says, I must forget what is behind me and move towards what's before me. So he, 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 he lists all his accomplishments, and he, he's willing to turn his back on them. He's willing to dismiss them. Now, his accomplishments were not evil in and of themselves. It was his perspective or response to what his accomplishments were. His ego, his pride, his self-righteousness was the problem, not the achievements. There's, there's nothing wrong with you and I being success. It's our perspective with our success. Now, you're not man or woman made. You have been made by the hand of God. You are made in his image. And it is to the extent that God opens the door that I'm walking through it. It's my perspective for how it is I've arrived where I've arrived. Did you do it or did God do it? It's Paul's perspective was wrong. Then he says, but I have to forget what lies behind me. I must forget what, what, is, what is behind me and push towards what is ahead. What's interesting, he says, I must, I must forget what is behind me before I move ahead. You miss it. I must forget what is behind me before I move ahead. Who am I talking to? Some of us are trying to move ahead, but we haven't left. We haven't forgotten what was behind us. Now, let me help you. When he says forget, it doesn't mean act like it didn't happen. He's not saying act like it didn't happen. To, to, to forget what's behind, the issue that Paul is, is, is wrestling with, it is, it is to bring what was in the past into the present and cause you to be stagnant. Say it one more time. It is when I, I take what was behind me, it's in the past, but I'm, I'm, it, it's, it's impeding my ability to be able to go forward because I'm bringing past pain, past trauma, unresolved issues, uh, uh, abuse and betrayal. I'm, I'm, every time I'm about to move forward, I go backwards and, and I bring up past failures and past f fear and, and past all these things and I can't go forward because I'm stuck because what I'm doing is I'm bringing what was behind me into the present and it's impacting my future. Now, pain, pain, pain and trauma should be resolved. I told you last Sunday, I'm all for therapy and wise counsel. It, now, there are, there, are, there are positive and negative effects of experiences that we have in life. So if I've been, if I've been betrayed or abused or gone through certain types of trauma in my life, a, a, the negative impact of me not dealing with it so it can stay there is I can become what happened to me. It can lead me to distrust that, that even when God is sending people in my life to help me to go forward, I can't trust people because I keep bringing this in my present. A, a, a positive way to, to look at it is that I can go through that, 
Dip, come on, but don't be there. Y'all trying to help me preach over here. I can go through that, but don't be there. That rhymed. I'm going to say that again. I can go through that, but don't be there. That's bad English, but it's good theology. But watch this. It's, it's also that I can go through something, resolve it in a healthy way to where it now empowers me and gives me resilience and strength so that I can go forward. But it's not, listen, listen, we're praising God, but it's not always failures and negativity that stops us from going forward. Some of us are still wearing the jersey that we wore. In <laughs> Sometimes our past success, you're still holding on to something that you accomplished 10 to 20 years ago. And because you're stuck in that world, that zone, you can't even move forward because that's the only success you can relate to. Lord, help me. Lord, have mercy on me. And, and, and listen, the, the, the negative of that is that now you're, you're holding on to that so much that you're not even open for new success. You're not even willing to take risks. Now, when you, when you realize that you are able to have successes in your, in your life, it's an amazing. First of all, it should increase our faith in God's ability to move in our life. It, it, should, it should make us want to see what might God want to do next, and Lord, what opportunities may you give me so that I can move forward and be everything you've called me to be. Now, can, uh, can I keep going? You sure? All right. <clears throat> Past love. <clears throat> Y'all said keep going. You said it. Past relationships. Here's just one. This ain't going to be no relationship series. I can go through. Anybody had their heart broken? All right, praise God. You're not by not praise God, but God bless you. God bless you. Praise. I mean, praise God. I'm not by myself. Not praise God. Your heart was broken. Lord, have mercy. Y'all got to edit the tape when, when we put, put this up. Edit the tape. But in the past, I can go through a breakup, and my heart can be broken. It can be devastating. I could feel betrayed, and, and I'm stuck. Every time God introduces me to someone new, I view them through the lens of my brokenness. Lord, I'm just praying you send me someone. Every time I do, you make them him. Every time I do, you make them her. You, 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 it's, it's the danger of, of leaving what's in the past in the past, resolving it, and allowing God to move you forward. Paul says, I have to leave it in the past. If I keep bringing the, 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 my, my self-righteousness in the law, it will impede my ability to have freedom and liberty in Jesus Christ. Are you with me? So, so he, says, he says to me, like, I, 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 need, I need you to forget what's behind you, and I need you to press forward to what lies ahead. Now, now here's, here's one of the dangers. Um, you, guys, you guys remember the story in, 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 in 1 Kings 17 where, where the, mo- the, the mother loses, loses her son and the son, the son dies and she goes to Elijah and she, she, she concludes, she concludes that what she's experiencing in the present is because of her failures in the past. She literally talked to the, to the prophet and says, um, if, if I, if, is, it because I've sin- is, it, is it because I've sinned that God has come to get me? Yeah. She said, oh, my God. That she has now concluded in her present that a mistake she made back then is the reason why she's experiencing what she's experiencing right now. God wants you to, when he forgives you back here, it's settled. Now, I'm not saying there aren't consequences for actions. What I am saying is when God forgives you, he forgives you. All right, let me, I, I don't know where I'm going here, but I'm going to go here. Now, there's a difference between karma and grace. Should I go there? All right, y'all, y'all done got me in trouble. Open up the door, start the car and everything. Just, I'm going to look up and everything. So, now, I, just want you, I want you to stay with me for a minute. So this, the, 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 one, the principles, and this is not a, a lesson on it, this is just a quick word on it. Karma suggests no matter what I've done, at some point in my life, it has to come back. Am I wrong? Right? It could be 20 years later. See? There it is. Karma. 
I'm going to step out of karma, step into grace. God gives grace and mercy. Now, when God gives me mercy, he is, he is not giving me what I deserve. You missed it. Favor is when God blesses you in spite of you. Mercy is when God does not give you what you actually deserve. See, I can't, I can't rock with karma because it means no matter what I've done, no matter how repentant I am, no matter how forgiving I am, no matter how remorseful I am, no matter what happens, at some point in my life, it's going to come and slap me in the back of the head. I don't serve a God of karma. I serve a God of mercy and grace and compassion that will love me and hold me and pick me up and dust me off and start me on a new way. That's why I've been regenerated. The old man's back there and the new man's are coming forth so I can be everything that God has called me to be. Can I get a pray, a, about four seconds of praise for God's mercy and God's grace and his compassion? So every, time, every time I see someone, this karma, I, I, understand, I understand what our culture is trying to say. I just can't say it. I know, because I know too much about God. Do you, do you know some of the things you, we've done? And, and, we, and, we, and we cried because we could not even understand how God could still love you and forgive you and keep you in spite of what you've done? Y'all better help me praise God for his grace and his mercy. See, when, when, when you've never done anything wrong, you can sit down like this. But if you've ever made a mistake when you couldn't sleep at night, you will raise your hands and thank God for his mercy and his grace and his compassion and his love because I didn't deserve it, but he loved me enough to give it to me anyhow. Paul says, I must forget what's behind me so that I can press forward to be everything God has called me to be in the future. There's, there is joy in knowing Jesus. You better know him. There is joy in forgetting what is behind me. There is freedom and liberty in leaving what's in the past in the past. There's also joy in obtaining the prize. I'm in verse 13 now. Verse 13 says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have laid hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind me, watch this, straining towards what is ahead. Then he says in verse 14, I press on towards the goal of the prize. There it is. For which God has called me heavenward in Jesus. Now I want to go back for a second. He uses two words that appear to be the same. He says, I strain forward. But then he says, and I press on. One more time. He says, I strain forward, I press on. Now, if you read it in, your, in the English translation, it just seems like, oh, he said, okay, he's just going for it. Stop. It's not what's happening. He's, he now is using athletic imagery. He's mentioned the prize. He begins now to use athletic imagery, and when he does, he says, I've now, now that I've dealt with my past, I've, I've left it behind me. I, I am now, to, my, to the best of my ability, going to strain forward, and I'm going to press forward. Now, let me just help you. I'm going to give you this for free. Now, you can't strain forward looking backwards. You, you mess around and trip trying to strain forward looking backwards. When, when you have to let go of what's there to press forward and to strain forward. Now, to strain forward... Is, is, is if you're running, if you're a runner, and, and say, that, say this is the finish line. I'm running as a runner, and when I get to the, when I, when I know that the prize is here, I'm straining forward. Now, let me help you. If you, if you, if you, if you pay attention to, to sprinters or runners, even when they are in first place, and the person is almost a whole second behind them, don't you realize they still, come on. Because me coming in like this and me coming in like this could be the difference of the world record. 
So as a runner, Paul says, I'm straining to get the prize. What? Of the upward call of Jesus. Listen, he says, I'm going to live my life in such a way that when I cross the finish line, I'm getting the prize that I know I'm going to be with Jesus. He, he didn't say, I'm, I'm running and straining towards money. He didn't say, I'm running and straining towards her. He didn't say, I'm running and straining towards him. He didn't say, I'm running and towards a new opportunity. He said, no, 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 no. All that's back there. I'm living my life running that I may strain towards heaven. I want to have eternal life. Is there anybody in here that while you're doing the things that God has called you to do, when you go in the office, I'm clocked in for work, but I'm straining towards the prize. I'm clocked in with my family at home as a daddy, but I'm straining towards the prize. I may be sitting here in church, but I'm straining towards the prize. You may go to the football game after church, but I'm straining towards the prize. Every location you find me in, I'm straining towards the prize because I want to know Jesus and I want to go to heaven. Do I got any witnesses in the house? I'm straining to get Jesus Christ. I want to go to heaven. This world looks crazy. You may not know what to do, but I know who to call on. His name is Jesus. And I'm straining towards the prize of Jesus. Now, wow, I'm, so, I'm so happy. Watch this. But he said strain, but then he said press on. Y'all about to get me in trouble. You, you with me? <laughs> he says, I strain. Then if I strain, why do I need to press on? See, I, I like to ask the Bible good questions. Why do I have to strain and press? Because press does not mean strain, and strain doesn't mean press. Straining means when I get there, I'm going to do everything I can to get through the line. Pressing is different. Pressing is a picture of I, I'm, I, I, I see what I'm, look, what, I, what I'm trying to obtain, and I pursue it. You missed it. It means as an athlete, I'm going to train and exert every ounce of energy that I have to pursue my prize. Stay with me. But it means to chase it. But it doesn't just mean to chase it. It means to chase it and to capture it. Y'all, y'all don't. Now, now, it's, it's like flag football. In flag football, when, 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 you, when, you, when, you, when we're on the line, the goal of the opponent or the defense is to make sure that they chase down the opponent, but they capture their flag. It's not enough to just chase the opponent. You can chase him into the end zone and you lose. It is I'm chasing you, I'm pursuing you, that I may capture your, your flag and stop the play. As a believer, I'm, I'm running, pursuing Jesus, that I may capture him. In fact, Jacob said, God, I won't let go till you bless me. He, he wrestled with God and he captured him and said, I'm not letting go until you bless me. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm chasing Jesus and I won't let go till he blesses me. I'm chasing Jesus and I won't let go until I see him in heaven. Because to be absent from the body means to be present with the Lord. So I'm chasing and pursuing Jesus that I may lay hold of him and have everlasting life. Can somebody help me praise God? I'm straining towards Jesus that I may capture him. I'm straining towards him. I'm pressing towards him. What is my prize? Jesus. It's Jesus. Let me help you. There are so many of us here. God has gifted you. You are, you are blessed. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. You are made in the image of God. You are, you are fabulous, amazing, gifted. God has deliberately placed you in different arenas. And people say, well, what, what, is, my, what, is, what is my purpose? Let me help you. Your purpose and calling are different. Your purpose, because you've been created in the image of God, you can read scripture. If I was to simplify it to this, it is that you would glorify God. Got one hallelujah and then everybody, huh? My purpose is to glorify God. Stay with me. Now, it, it is you, it is worked or walked out differently in my calling. 
So God may send me to a different location, vocation, to do, the, do, to, to do work. But my purpose doesn't change. You got it. Even where I am in that arena, my purpose is still to glorify God. You can be an attorney. You know what your goal is? Glorify God. You can be a teacher. You know what your goal is? Glorify God. You can, you, you can be a doctor. You know what your goal is? Glorify God. You, you can work in retail. You know what your job is, even with those crazy customers? Glorify God. It doesn't change. Your calling may be in a different arena, but the purpose we have is that we, we may live our lives in such a way that when we, we can cross the finish line and glorify God with everything that we do. So I have a question, very, very, very simple question, very simple question. Do you want the prize? Do you want the prize? Yes. 